In this video, we're going to be looking at how you can add additional information to data labels. So in this example here, I've got a line graph and it shows the, the schedule attainment each week. And next to it, we've got in brackets an indicator, which is either an up or a down arrow and a value. And that indicates the, the change from the previous week. So for example, here we can see that this increased by seven percentage points and this one decreased by two etc etc so we're going to cover that now I'm also going to cover how you can only display the last five values for example and the first value because we don't need all the values in between we're really just interested in this example here in what the the, the most recent history has been Hi, this is Jason from Effective Dashboards, helping maintenance and reliability professionals get the most out of Power BI. So welcome back to another video. Okay, so let's start with the logic that I have used to create these labels here that allow you to see the value plus the difference and an indicator if it's up or down from the previous week. So it all really starts with this dynamic formatting here. Okay, so this dynamic formatting is an option that allows you to dynamically set using some DAX code the format that you want the output of the labels to be displayed in. Now, this is a preview feature. So to switch it on, you do need to go to options and settings and then go into options and then go to preview features. And then here it is here, dynamic format and right at the very bottom here. So once you switch that on, and you select your measure and you select this format as dynamic for that measure, there will be an extra box that's displayed here that says format. Okay, we can see there's a box for the measure and there's an option for format. Now in here, there's the option to add additional code that, that can be used to generate the, the output format of the actual text here, so the, this value here. So to start off with, um, this code here is a straightforward version if you just want to display a value for every single data point. Now I will go into, in the second part of this video, I'll go into how you can only display the last five data points in the first one so that you, you, you don't have such a cluttered view. But for this one here, it's really straightforward. So the first thing I've done is you don't need to type in the measure name, you just need to start declaring code and, and, and declaring variables basically. So the first thing I've done here is I've declared schedule attainment percentage as a variable and I've calculated the schedule attainment percentage for the previous week. Okay, so the data set that we've got here has got um, a date for the, the start of each week with the corresponding schedule attainment number as a percentage. So we've got the schedule attainment, we're using date add and we're going to go back seven days across the, the date table to find the, the previous value there. Okay, and we're using that calculate statement there that's going to allow us to basically remove the, the existing filters and, and get that previous week's value. So once we've got the previous week's value, we're then going to declare another variable here, which is schedule attainment, current week, previous week difference, which is just going to be the schedule attainment minus the schedule attainment the, the previous week. So we're going to get a difference there. And then we're going to format this difference. So schedule attainment current week, previous week difference, and we're going to format that. Um, I could have probably just actually wrapped it around here, but we've done it here anyway. Now, this format function has got three components to it. So let's make it a little bit bigger. Okay, so we can see the three components are separated by the semicolon here. Now, the first part of it is basically saying, that's how I want to format and display um, a positive value for this difference here. Okay, so if the difference is a positive value, so it was it's higher this week than it was the previous week. Then we want to basically append um, an upward facing arrow here. Now you can pick it up just by doing a search for arrows, unichar arrows, and I'll leave a link below for that. Um, and then this zero here is saying that I want it to be zero or just one decimal place. Um, and then the percentage is that we're going to append a percentage to the end of it. Now this format. And this whole string here, actually, this whole value here, will want to return a text string, okay? So that's that's what it's doing. Um, and then the, the next value here is going to be the downward point indicator. Now, this is if it's a negative value. So after the semicolon, this is a negative value. And then finally, if it's zero, then we just want it to be zero. 
So again, I'll leave a link below for this format function. There's loads of different format strings you can get for dates, for numbers, for, for strings, for all sorts of stuff. Um, too much to cover in this video here. So if you want to find out a bit more about the, the, how you can set that second parameter, then I'll leave a link below to a video that um, allows you to see that. Okay, so now we've got our difference. The next thing we're going to do is we're actually going to start the output with this four um, commas here. Okay, so it's a com basically what we're doing is we're wrapping this whole thing in commas, and to do that, we've got to put these four commas here. And that basically forces the output to be a string. Now, sometimes if you don't do that, and I'll show you what the, the result is, there can be some weird things happen with some of the values. So then we're going to append it to another format statement that's basically going to format the schedule attainment to one decimal place. And um, then we're going to append that to a bracket, open bracket. Then we're going to put in this value here, which is going to be the difference from the previous week with that up or down arrow. And then we're going to have a bracket at the end of it. OK, so this is going to be what's going to return our string that's going to be used for our data labels. So let's click on here, minimize that. And we can see that this is how we've got the, the various ups and downs here. Now, just as a little bit of a caution here, if I do take this bit out at the start, most of the values will look like they're working, but this end value here doesn't work for some reason. Okay, it's just basically saying 86 and then 86. So that's um, the, the, the fix for that is basically just to add in that value there. And that will fix that nicely. Okay, so that's how you add in these values here. Now, if you're interested in understanding how you can only put in or only display the first five values and the first value, then I'll cover that in the next part of this video. Okay, so just to set the scene, here is the, the date table that we've got or the data table that we've got that um, that's looking at the schedule attainment. We've got a schedule attainment value and we've got one every week. Okay, so here's one here from the... 7th of April, the 14th of April, the, right up to the 21st of April, which was a few days ago. Now, if I go into the data model here, we can see that we've got a, because we want to use one date table, um, we've got a connection here between the date table and the schedule attainment date. Okay, so we can see it's connected to that date there. So let's go back now and look at the code that we've used, which only shows the last five values. Now you can choose it to be the last three, last two, last last 10 values, and also the first value. So I think it just potentially helps to make it a little bit less cluttered if you are not really too interested in the, you're interested in the overall trend, but you're more interested in the detail for the last sort of five weeks or whatever. So we're gonna go back into our measure and I'm gonna go back into the format and we're going to look at the code here. So I've extended it and there's a few bits and pieces in here that I'm just going to take you through. So the first part's the same. We're going to calculate and we're going to set up variables for the schedule attainment, variable for the schedule attainment the previous week, and then we're going to calculate the difference and format that difference. So that's not changed. That's fine. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to get the current date using selected value date. So in the whenever each of these values have been calculated, the current date will be the date that that value lands on. And then the next thing we have to do is we've got to find the first non-blank value. So this is what we're going to use to determine this value here. Now, if I just turn on the tooltips, okay, we can see that date there is the 6th of the 1st, 2023. However, the, the, the first date in the date range selected is the 1st of the 1st, 2023. Now, looking at our data, we don't have data for every single day, okay? Now the date table has got a date for every single day. So what we actually want to do is, rather than display a value here for the first date in the range that's actually in the filter context, which is set, set here, we want the this here to be displayed for the first date that there is an actual value for the schedule attainment calculation, okay? so. That said, let's go back in and look at the code. Okay, so that's what that's going to do. It's basically going to use a calculate statement. The first thing it's going to do is filter across all the dates selected. Okay, and it's going to find the first date that's not blank. Okay, 
and then it's going to return the minimum of that date which is going to be that date because there's only going to be um well no it's going to find the minimum of that date here so it's going to find all the dates that are not blank and then it's going to return the minimum of those dates and that's going to return the first date which is going to be the the sixth i think it was sixth of january okay so that's going to help us later on so let's just part that for just now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to then go and calculate a table with all of the dates the last five dates so the top five dates that again are filtered to not be blank okay we don't want just the last five dates because we'll get the very last date and every day of the week because we've got um a, we've got a date table that's got a continuous range of dates for every single day so we'll the last five dates that have actually got a value and this is exactly what this is doing here so it's finding the last top five dates that have got an actual value here not blank for schedule attainment okay so the next bit of logic we've got here the next variable is in the last five non-blank dates so we're going to use this contains function here and it accepts a table which is a table that was returned with this top last five non-blank dates so these are all the dates the last five dates that's got a value and the table is just going to be a list of dates from the dates table that's got um, that's got a value for schedule attainment here and the column is going to be date date because that's the one that we've actually generated here with this top five dates and what it's going to do is it's going to check to see does the current date, so as you go through each of the dates in the date table, does it, is it in this date here? Okay, basically. Now if it is, it's going to return two, if it's got at least one row here. So if, it, if this current date is in at least one of these rows here, it's going to return true. Otherwise, it's going to return false. And then we go and calculate the result. So we're going to return a result using an if statement. So the first thing we're going to check to see is, is the current, is the date that we're on? So remember, this gets executed for every date in the in the table, or every date that's returned in the filter context. Is it in the last five dates? If it is that, or if the current date is equal to the first non-blank date, which is this date up here, then we're going to return this nicely formatted um, string here that's going to be the schedule attainment plus the difference between that week and the previous week. Um, otherwise, we're just going to return this string here, which is going to be, we don't want to return a blank, we want to return a blank string, okay? Because remember, we're returning a string because that's how it's going to be rendered on the screen. And then, just as belts and braces, we're going to append this string to the start of the result, and that's going to return only the last five values. So we can see the overall trend, but we've only got the last five values here. Now, one thing you can do to, um, to make that even better is actually for the first value, we're not interested in the, the, the difference between the previous week. So we can quickly update the code to reflect that. So I'm actually going to change this to be a switch statement. Rather than use a nested if statement, because we've got to check, first of all, we've got to check to see, is it in the last five dates? And if it is, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy that. Then I'm going to return this formatted string here. And then the second part of the statement is going to be this one here, which is current date equals that date there. And if it um, the first non-blank date, and if it is, I'm only going to return the first part of this, which is going to be just the formatted schedule attainment. We don't want the difference. And then otherwise it's going to be just a blank. Now that should work. Okay, so we can see the first date here. Now that just gives a bit of a waypoint to say, okay, we'll start at 74. So we know we're kind of heading up in the right direction. And then we're getting a bit more into the detail for the, the previous or the last five dates here. So that's... Um, a little bit of an extra bonus there if you're interested in how you just display the last five dates plus the first one. What I would say as well, just as a final piece, is we probably want to put an explanation as to what that actually is. So let's go and we're going to use a subtitle here. So I'm going to go to title and I'm going to go to subtitle. I'm going to make sure that's switched on. Just make it a little bit lighter. That's probably too light. There. Okay. Um, so number in brackets is percentage point points difference from prior week. Okay, so this one's a little bit different in that it's actually the number of percentage points is not the percentage difference. So again, another consideration there if you're dealing with percentages and, and changes, etc. So that just um, adds that little extra bit of information there.
Okay, so thanks for watching and if you found this video useful, it's always appreciated if you give it a thumbs up and if you want to keep up to date with the latest videos that I release, then hit the subscribe button and you'll get a notification whenever I publish a new video. Thanks again for watching and I'll talk to you in the next video.